What's up, fight fans? It's Monday, and so I'm just a part of the Pacific. And since my lazy ass skipped the sack last week, it's time for a super sack. So it's pretty much like every other week, except I answer 20 questions instead of 10 with two shirt winners. You guys know the drill. You send questions, I answer them, and someone walks away with a brand new Triple THS t shirt. Everybody else walks away with anger and frustration. Let's do this shit! Call me Sack! Bernie Mosatelli. Tommy, a group of us were discussing this at the bar in all of Hollywood. Who would make the worst Batman? I said Pat Oswalt, which was trumped by Christopher Walken. What's your pick? My pick is Stephen Hawking. He would make a great Bruce Wayne, though. Adam Gillespie. Will Eddie Alvarez ever fight again? Of course, Adam. I fully expect Eddie to be fighting Jose Aldo's son at UFC 300. That's what I love about Eddie, by the way. Viacom's like, hey, if you take us to court, you're gonna lose several years from the prime of your career. So I guess you're stuck here. But Eddie said, fuck that shit. I'm Optimus Prime. My prime's as long as I want it to be. Anderson Silva's 57 years old, and Vitor Belfort still can't beat him. You guys can suck it. Oh, and by the way, my lawyers are Matlock, Phoenix Wright, and Tom Cruise from A Few Good Men. Short of wiping his ass with his contract, that's about as gangster as it gets. Jim Green. Will the UFC fans ever boo Dana White the same way Stern and Batman were booed during their league's player drafts. I don't think so, Jim. The difference between Dana White and the other commissioners is fan interaction. He'll take the time to get a picture with you. He's always willing to take a quick question from a fan. And if you get out of line, he has no problem calling you a fucking clown. When was the last time Roger Goodell called somebody a fucking clown? He hasn't, which is why nobody likes him. If Goodell came out for the draft with middle fingers raised, calling people pussies and telling Rex Ryan he's a dumbass, I bet the fans would like him a little bit more. Alex Griner. Chupacabras? Why do you think UFC hasn't gone to Mexico yet? Motherfucking chupacabras. Ryan English. Hey, Tommy, what is the most illegal thing you've ever seen in professional wrestling? Is it this? By himself, ducks from the clothesline. Amas is catching him. What? Mesmerizing. He's using hypnosis! Believe it or not, that clip ends with breakdancing. Marcel Folsom. Can apples ever be a part of MMA? James Norris. Dear Tommy, if you could be in any video game, what would it be, and who would your character be? If I could be in any video game, I want to be in one where I'm not noob-tubed, there aren't endless hordes of zombies trying to kill me, I can't be frozen and have my spinal cord ripped out with my head, chased by a faceless guy in a suit through the forest, I don't want my girlfriend running off with a dinosaur every five minutes, and goddammit, I don't want to have to talk to every NPC in town just to figure out where the fuck I'm going next. What does that leave us? Tetris. I would be the T-shape, because those fucking Z-shaped pieces never fit anywhere. Fuck you, Z-shaped pieces. Nobody likes you. Sean Sheehan. Do you think rugby's British and Irish Lions can win the third test against Australia? Sean, I only understood about two of those words, so I'm going to assume that you're talking about rugby, which here in America is exclusively for frat guys who would rather drink than try to play football. And by football, I mean American football, because soccer is football too, and you guys don't call soccer soccer, you call it football. What I'm really trying to say, Sean, is that Half-Life 3 is confirmed. Add Daniel twits. Vitor was interviewed about fighting Masasi and spoke only in the third person. Has Cheez-Its finally taken over his mind? That, or he realized that being halfway nuts just wasn't cutting it. If you're gonna be crazy, you gotta go straight Gary Busey. None of this Charlie Sheen shit where you get your act together and do a terrible sitcom. I'm talking full-blown Howard Hughes. Telling your people to put food out by an oak tree every Tuesday to feed the elves that live inside. Vitor's not there just yet, but third person is taking steps in the right direction. Mr. Pistophagus. I have a theory that any movie slash TV show could be improved with Velociraptors. How would Raptors help your show? Interesting theory, Matt. And now that you mentioned it, I always thought the ending of Shawshank Redemption was missing something. Now I know that something is a six-foot prehistoric killing machine. As far as improving this show, shit, anything would make this show better, Matt. Except for those Z-shaped pieces in Tetris. Motherfuckers. Scott Savo. What was GSP's reaction to watching Anderson lose? Shane McNulty, could you give us a reenactment of your reaction to Anderson Silva getting knocked out? Landon Armstrong, with last night's loss, will Silva balloon up to 280, then cut weight to 185, then be an unstoppable killing machine? The spider does love him some Burger King, and with Weidman's history of knocking people into life-altering depressions, I can see Anderson pulling a reverse Al Roker, and then a forward Al Roker. I will say this though, and I've always held this position, Fat Anderson Silva would beat Fat GSP. Adam Gillespie.
again. If photons are both quanta of light and the force carriers of electromagnetic force, does that mean photons propagate magnetic fields? And if so, why can't these photons be seen? I'm sure Dr. Slice could answer this for me. God damn it! An accelerating electron charge creates a magnetic field, and photons have no charge. You can't see the photons because they're virtual, a mathematical construct of quantum electrodynamics. When was the last time you saw a mathematical construct walking down the motherfucking street, huh? You know why you can't see the tooth fairy? Because that motherfucker's not real. And if he was, I would fight him in a boatyard and put that shit on YouTube. Richard Bobber. If the middleweight title could speak, what would it say? And how would it sound? Does it miss its master? Hey, man. Look, let's just take it slow, okay? I don't know you. You don't know me. I was with Anderson for a long time. It's gonna take me a while to warm up to you. I need you to respect my space. The middleweight title is Cheech Marin. Francisco Corral. Tommy, could Chris Weidman start a following as big as Hulkamania? What would his followers be called? Wide Maniacs? Wieners. Or... No, wieners. Steven Avila. What's in the box? Spoiler alert, it's Pepper Potts. Well, part of Pepper Potts. You know what makes no sense about the ending of Seven? How the fuck did John Doe know exactly how that would play out? You know what, not even that. How did he know the detective on his case would A, have a family, B, be conveniently not home at the time he killed Pepper Potts, and C, what the fucking fuck, movies? Every villain's plans now are based on the completely unpredictable nature of other people. How'd the Joker know he wasn't getting locked up in county? Or that Batman would save Dent, thus allowing him to get captured? These plans are way too fucking complicated and have way too many random ass variables that the villain has no control over. Stop it, movies. Stop that shit right now. Ryan McAway. I was less than impressed with Weidman's post-KO celebration in the Octagon. What would you have done if you were Chris Weidman in that moment? I'm gonna have to agree with you, Ryan. Weidman beat the greatest fighter that ever lived, and he no doubt was fucking psyched about it, but that celebration wasn't worthy of that victory. If I had just beaten Anderson Silva, first thing I'm doing is jumping into the audience, then I'm roundhouse kicking Steven Seagal and saying I taught Anderson that, then I run up to the hottest chick in the arena and just start making out with her while I'm draped in the flag and America by Neil Diamond blares in the background. Cue the fireworks and you've got a celebration worthy of the win. T-shirt time! This week we're giving away two shirts for two different questions. Each week I select 10 questions to be on the show, then one of those is chosen at random to receive a Triple THS t-shirt. So what I just said times two is what's about to go down. First shirt winner is Chuck Chucky Bucks Cacho who asked, as I sit there stunned, watching the spider grab at the ref's leg, confused from getting knocked the fuck out, all I could think to say to my shot friends next to me was, what would the ultimate warrior do? Hashtag WWTUWD. He'd no sell it like a motherfucker. Pedigree coming right about. Yeah. It's over. <laughs> no, it's not. Fuck your pedigree, Triple H. Our second shirt winner is Jason Hyatt who asked, Okay, Tommy, there's a giant asteroid headed towards the Earth. NASA funds a mission to send Anderson Silva to front kick it in the face. Does Steven Seagal take credit for saving the planet? Not only does he take credit for saving the planet, but he takes credit for the planet even being there in the first place. Steven Seagal created Earth, and he taught it how to create him. And if you're smoking right now, I probably just freaked you the fuck out. That's Super Sack Fight fans. If you want the shirt heading Jason the Chuck's way, you gotta buy one at TripleDHS.com. It's what Cheez-Its would do. If I did answer your question this week. It's probably for the best, really. I mean, you don't really want to be associated with the show, do you? Tune in this Wednesday for the UFC 162 East Triple THS you ever did see. It's gonna be unlike any show I've ever done. So we're shooting for decent.